uh, the easiest way to refer to uh, air supported belt conveyors is to compare them to an air hockey game. I think most people are familiar with air hockey games. Um, there's a series of holes on a table and the hockey puck is, it floats on a cushion of air that moves back and forth easily enough. It's a little bit different with air supported belt conveyors in that, that the uh, belt actually floats on a cushion of air and that cushion of air is no more than a millimeter, a millimeter and a half. And the air is injected into a plenum section or a box and then forced through the holes, very similar to an air hockey game, uh, through that series of holes and the air then encompasses the belt and it floats the belt. The, the difference between an air hockey game and an uh, air supported uh, belt conveyor is an air hockey game has many, many different little holes because the puck has to, has to float from one end to the other and to the sides. On an air supported belt conveyor, for instance, you have a single row of holes evenly spaced along the center line of the conveyor, just one row of holes. And then the air is being forced through these holes to lift the belt up and then the air escapes along the entire length of the conveyor on both edges of the belt. There are many, many, many uh, advantages to air supported belt conveyors. Uh, if one looks at, at all these advantages, sometimes the um, saying it's too good to be true comes up, but uh, just to go through some of them, the biggest benefit is the reduction of conveyor maintenance. Uh, if you take a, a 100 foot long conveyor and with, with idler spacing at about three and a half feet, you have a series of rollers that uh, eventually need to be greased or, and or replaced. On a air supported belt conveyor, all both uh, troughing and return idlers are totally eliminated. Together with the reduction uh, of, maintenance, of idler maintenance, of course, you know, there is the reduction of uh, dust generations and, and spillages and so forth. Increased belt life. As the belt is, is loaded on a, on a cushion of air and the belt rides over that cushion of air, there is no friction between the bottom uh, cover of the belt and anything that it goes over except for the, the head pulley the, and, the, and the tail pulleys. Uh, generally, the average life of a belt conveyor belt is somewhere between five and 10 years. We've experienced some real benefit in that um, the belt uh, on an air supported belt conveyor uh, has been known to last uh, 22 years and, and longer than that where the belt has only changed because the covers have become so perforated. Uh, another point is that because the conveyors uh, have an inherent strength because it's practically a box section, uh, we can span longer distances with the conveyor on a hover glide that may be somewhere between 20 and 40 feet. On a hover tube, it is more like 80 to 100 feet where the belt is unsupported or the conveyor itself is unsupported. And in many cases on a hover tube, because it is totally enclosed for the entire length of the conveyor, uh, no walkways are, are required, no pull cord switches are required, saving a tremendous amount of uh, uh, investment in capital initially. In the industry, in the bulk material handling industry, most conveyors are designed with a 35 degree trough. Because of our standard 45 degree trough and because we can fit a little bit more material onto the belt, the, um, we can generally reduce the belt width by at least one size. We can 
sometimes even reduce it two sizes because, because the conveyor is totally enclosed, we can generally move a lot faster. Uh, the belt speeds for an average conveyor range between 300 and uh, 500 feet per minute. We have belts now in operation that uh, exceed 800 and 900 feet per minute and we've been able to reduce the belt width by going to that type of a cross-section and belt speed. So on a conventional conveyor when when material is loaded onto the belt uh, a lot of the material is spilled over onto the return section and uh, is carried back to the tail pulley or the whole loading area is just covered with with a lot of material. Uh, on a air supported belt conveyor that does not happen. The loading section is totally enclosed and it's impossible for it to spill uh, over onto the uh, ground or onto the return belt. The conveyor is also virtually noiseless. Again, the belt rides on a cushion of air. There is uh, there's no noise, no idler noise to, to accommodate. And people have always said that the biggest um, immediate show of an air supported belt conveyor is the lack of noise. All you hear is just a, a very small rushing of air sometimes. Uh, another real advantage is, is a power savings, a power horsepower savings. Because the conveyor rides on a cushion of air and eliminates practically all friction, on a horizontal conveyor, generally over, over an idler conveyor, there is a, a horsepower reduction of about one third. So if you have a 60 horsepower motor on your conveyor, uh, generally on an air supported conveyor that handling the same amount of material and, and at, at the same rate, the reduction in horsepower is about 20. So you can get away with a 40 horsepower motor. The belt and the load are supported by a cushion of air. And when you say it is supported by air, people generally visualize the, a big compressor and air being pushed into uh, an orifice at about 90 PSI. Uh, that is not so by, with, with air supported belt conveyors. They take very little air and very little pressure to really work. And I'll give you, for instance, if you take a 100 foot long conveyor, say for the sake of argument, a 36 uh, inch wide belt handling 500 tons per hour of coal, it takes an average of three to three and a half CFM per linear foot. Uh, if you calculate that out, that's about 350 CFM. If you compare that to the the fan above your stove, which is generally in the neighborhood from 700 to 1,000 CFM, you can see that it takes very little air to move that 500 tons per hour uh, on a 36 inch belt. We do use a little bit more pressure than the fan above your stove. Uh, the pressures that we're talking about are considerably less than one PSI, one PSI being 27.7 inches of water gauge. Our belt conveyors generally uh, are somewhere between uh, 18 and 22, 23 inches of water gauge. That's the average. We have gone as high as 40 inches, but that's on the 60 inch wide conveyors, 72 inch wide conveyors, where you're handling uh, three to five to 6,000 tons per hour of a product. The air supported belt conveyor is designed according to the SEMA standards, and we try to stress that as much as we can. SEMA sets the standards for all bulk material handling and, and belt conveyors kind of throughout North America and it's spilled over into, uh, into Europe and the Far East as well. We try to 
to, to adhere to some of these rules, although some of the rules uh, do not apply. And we are presently uh, in the process of writing the specs for SEMA to, uh, on, on standardization of air support of bell conveyors.